to me, uh, something that I'd love to get some clarification on is Sky Judge or Hawkeye, right? Whatever we're, we're calling that system. Uh, I, I And by that, I mean somebody's watching the game that's not wearing a zebra outfit on the field and communicating with the on-field officials about something. And usually as a fan, you can tell that that communication has happened about something when um, something gets changed uh, by, and an announcement is made. And the question is, is what can Hawkeye chime in on? Has that changed at all from one season to the next? Well, yes, yes, it has, Rich. And this is our fourth year. If we play assist, those are the two words yes, that, there. That, uh, that fans really probably want to get used to hearing. And they'll hear that a little, a little more this year because we're actually going to use that in announcements if we end up assisting the officials uh, with, with uh, areas and, and helping them to get the call right. But this will be our fourth year of replay assist. And every year, the competition community has looked at adding some additional areas. The main thing is we want things that are clear and obvious and objective in nature. We don't want subjective type things. We're not going to end up assisting because what was it holding or not, or was it pass interference? But this year, there were three areas added to replay assist. We can end up helping with the one area of roughing the passer that, that is somewhat objective, and that is was that was the head or neck area actually contacted? So if the official, the referee on the field has a flag for roughing the passer because he had a hit to the head and there was absolutely nothing in the head and neck area that was touched, we can help pick that flag up. Uh, the out of bounds play where a player is either in or out of bounds by rule. And so if the officials, if the only thing they rule is that he was out of bounds when he got hit, but we can actually see he was in bounds when he got hit, we can help with that. And then the third area is relative to uh, the uh, two areas that are objective in nature with intentional grounding with the quarterback being out of the pocket and the ball gets to the line of scrimmage, we can help with that. And then if the quarterback is clearly not under duress, uh, meaning he's not being pressured, he just simply, well, that route's not good. Let me just throw the ball away. He's allowed to do that if he's not under duress, as long as he doesn't spike the ball straight at his feet. So those are three areas that the fans, if they end up hearing the referee make an announcement after we play assist, the runner is not out of bounds. There is no foul for, for unnecessary roughness. That that came from the replay assist process. Walt, I'm 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 giving you a touchdown on that. That is fantastic. The the roughing the passer conundrum, where everybody sees it, everybody sees it at home through replay, that the roughing the passer call should not have occurred because that hit in the area that the ref, you know. R- and and it's it's I'm not denigrating. It's a tough job, and you are the first line of defense. You are the thinnest of blue lines, right there to try and protect players. So the flag comes out under that notion, but it's off. It's wrong. Now replay assist can buzz in and say, "Hey, huddle up. We're taking a look at this thing. There was no contact for roughing the passer. Pick up the flag. That is what can happen." week one, game one in the National Football League this year, is what you're saying. That is, that is correct, Rich. And it's, uh, you know, as you well know, most of the areas of up in the passer have subjective components. Yes. You know, was it weight or not? We're not going to get into that. Was it body weight or not? You know, was, you know, did he, did he pick the, the quarterback up and, and uh, slam him to the, to the ground? Those kinds of components are judgment. Those have to be left on the field. But you know, if the only thing that was called was you hit him in the head, and we've got video evidence that you hit him in the shoulder, and from that standpoint, that's what we can help with. Okay. What about spotting the ball? Can replay assist help with spotting the football? There was a game last year where it was a clear first down for the Rams. They wound up being shy. They didn't have any timeouts left to challenge. Sometimes replay assist can help with spotting the ball. They didn't seem to jump in right there, just as a for instance. What, what, what about spotting the football? Can replay assist chime in and say you're 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 off on the spot here? Fix yes, it. we can. I mean, it's clear and obvious. Uh, I think the example that you're you're mentioning, which is it was one of those things where you didn't really have a good reference point mm. and being able to see the ball, the, the line of game, and so forth, put all those elements together to make it clear and obvious. Uh, that would end up having to be something that would 
would have to be challenged. So the, the replay assist is to try to deal with those things that are crystal clear, crystal obvious, that everybody can see there's no analysis there. It's like, you know, the foot's out of bounds, you know, or the ball hit the ground, those kinds of things. So basically replay assist, um, and again, just walk everyone through the mechanics here because there's so much crazy tinfoil hat stuff that goes on in, in these moments because we're not seeing an official throw a flag. We're hearing somebody say, hold on a second. Somebody who's not here is chiming in. They're watching TV just like you and making a decision that's going to affect the outcome of this play, this quarter, this game, this scoring drive, or what have you. So it's, it's, it's a group of individuals sitting in the Art McNally Center in New York City looking at it and then watching each and every game and then chiming in and connecting well, with the official. That was the replay official who is uh, at the stadium okay. and a part of that crew. You know, okay. the, the official works with that same crew every week, so they're used to working. So it's really you know, a two-fold approach. The replay official at the stadium is looking. We're in constant communication from New York with that official, okay. and we've got staff people in New York who are also looking. And so it's kind of like the first one that can get to it. You know, Go ahead and chime in from that standpoint. But you know, the two main areas that it's it's not meant to replace the challenge system by a coach. It's really designed that if if the information is clear and obvious and can be communicated quickly, then that's what we're going to do because the the mechanics of it, Rich, you know, if a team is in a hurry up situation and the ball's about to be snapped, we, we can't really jump in with replay assist right. because the game has dictated that the pace of the game then takes precedence. Yeah. So then that would have to be a challenge. And that certainly uh, occurs more often against the defensive team than the offensive team because the offensive team controls the pace of the game. Last one for you. How come uh, the uh, the GPSing of footballs being spotted instead of the sticks that seemed to work in preseason, how come that didn't get uh, instituted for the playing season in 2024, Walt? It's really just because there's so much testing that has to go on, and we've got to be sure we can test it in all 30 stadiums, Rich. Uh, there, there are some behind-the-scenes uh, processes that, that sometimes work really well, and then there were some others that we learned didn't work as well. So we've got to take those learning experiences, uh, work at refining those here during the course of the year. It'll be addressed uh, next spring again by the competition committee, and everybody is anticipating that we'll continue to evolve that, Tested obviously a lot more in the preseason, and and if that if that testing ends up being successful, you know it's very likely that it, that it might end up being ready for the the uh, twenty twenty five season to roll it out during the regular season. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern for free.